Hey, I'm Joe, and I'm coming to you from Nankin Hobby to talk about charging batteries. We'll be walking through a number of the functions on a typical multi-chemistry charger and going over the charging process and maintenance procedures for the most common type of battery in our industry, lithium polymer. The charger we'll be using in this video is the Genzace iMars 3. Aesthetically, this charger really does it for me. It's pretty great in terms of specs for an AC charger in this size, and it has pretty phenomenal specs for a charger at this price point. If you're looking for a charger, I think the iMars 3 is a great choice, and we'll have links to this charger in the description. With that said though, the information in this video will be somewhat general. The iMars 3 is quite similar, or even identical, to many other charge chargers on the market in terms of setup menus. So if you have another brand of charger, you'll most likely still be able to follow along with the exact processes in this video. So, I'm not exactly doing an unboxing video here. I wanted to have the charger plugged in and ready to go, but here you can see the contents of the box. So, here we have the charger itself, which is this uh, sleek kind of Apple-esque looking thing. Um, we have the AC power cord, which I've already plugged in. A balance board. Charge leads for three of the most common types of connectors. We have EC3, EC5, and Deans. And of course, the manual. Now, these charge leads are actually really cool. Um, as most chargers use uh, banana plugs or bullet plugs, uh, which have the potential to short out if you were to unplug them from the charger before you unplug the battery. Uh, so this is kind of neat and it has, you know, less potential for that. It's kind of strange that they use XD60 to plug into the charger, but they don't actually give you an XD60 charge lead. Uh, not a big deal, you can pick one of those up, but just kind of awkward that it didn't come with that. Uh, so when you plug the screen, or when you plug the charger in, this is the default screen. Uh, different chargers may have different screens that come up by default. Uh, many will actually have a prompt the first time you turn them on asking you to confirm that you've read the manual. Uh, the iMars 3 doesn't have that, but you definitely should still do it. Uh, this video isn't intended to be a replacement for reading your manual. So from here, you have four buttons. You have uh, back and stop, increase, decrease, or enter slash start. Uh, if your charger has four similar buttons and a little LCD screen like this, chances are it works pretty similarly to the iMars 3. Uh, from this default screen, we can cycle up or down. Uh, if we press the down arrow, we will see this uh, program select, the, the system settings menu. Um, most people are never going to have to go into this, but there are a couple things in here worth, uh, worth mentioning, the safety timer and capacity cutoff. So safety timer on this uh, by default is 999 minutes and it's turned off. I was actually already messing around with this and I changed this. Um, but we can go in enter and this starts flashing that lets us turn it on or off and start again. Uh, it lets us change what we want that to be. Now, most uh, LiPo batteries, uh, they're typically gonna charge uh, in about an hour. Um, balance time, uh, if you're doing a balance charge, that can take a little bit longer. Um, depends on how out, out of whack your cells are when you, when you do a balance charge. Um, so I'm gonna set this to 120 minutes or two hours. Um, the charger should still stop when it's done, but if something were to go wrong, it would at least turn off within two hours. So capacity cutoff then is the next thing. Again, I've already messed with this a little bit. Um, by default, it's like 100,000. 100, it's, it's not even useful. Um, 100,000 milliamps is the default and it's turned off. Um, again, different chargers will have different defaults. This setting is especially noteworthy because of those differing defaults. Um, some of them are pretty common. For example, 5,000 is a really common one. Uh, I've seen many customers bring in chargers that seem to be turning off before their battery was fully charged and come to find out the capacity cutoff on their charger defaulted to something lower than the capacity of their battery. Uh, I would recommend setting this charger or setting this rating uh, to just a hair higher than the capacity of the largest pack you're going to be charging. Um, I have a 5200 milliamp Gen Z bashing pack here. Um, 
so this is a 5200 milliamp. I don't want to set that for less than 5200. And in fact, uh, ratings on batteries aren't always perfect. So I'm going to set this uh, up to 5300 because the capacity could be a little bit higher than 5200. And same thing, it should still turn off when it's uh, when it's done, but in the worst case, uh, it's not going to go too much higher than it should. Um, so now I will back out of this system settings menu, and I will cycle down one more time. And this option then is lithium battery meter. Uh, this is similar to little handheld cell checkers that you plug into the balance port on your LiPo batteries. Uh, if I plug my two cell pack, into this balance board, into two cell port, and press enter. I will see a readout of the uh, individual cell voltages on this two cell pack. So two cells, I have two of them. Now they're at 3.95 and 3.94. I've actually been messing around a little bit. Um, this is not the first take. So this actually charged up a little bit more than what it was out of the package. It was originally uh, 3.79 and 3.8. Um, a fully charged battery would be 4.2 volts per cell. Um, these don't come fully charged or dead. They're at something called storage voltage, which is around that 3.8, 3.85. Um, and we'll get into storage voltage a little bit more later. Uh, but you can also see that they're at that initial voltage or here. Um, they're within a hundredth of a, of a volt of each other, so pretty, pretty darn close to balanced as well. So I'll back out of this menu again, um, and I'll press decrease one more time, and now we get to the actual charge settings. If you wanna change these settings, uh, you press enter once, and one of these will start flashing and lets you edit that. Um, the iMars 3 can save settings for up to 12 batteries. Uh, that's this NO2 up at the top. Not sure why 2 is the default, but um, not all chargers have this function. So if you don't see something like that on your charger, you can just ignore this bit. Um, but I can cycle through those up or down. Um, I'm going to go to NO1. That makes the most sense to me. Press enter again. And now we can select our battery type. Uh, the iMars 3 allows you to charge LiPo, uh, lithium polymer, uh, lithium iron phosphate, lithium high voltage, uh, that's also lithium polymer, um, or nickel metal hydride. Um, different chargers may have more or fewer options, but the selection should be the same. Um, I have a regular lithium polymer battery here, so I will go with LiPo. The next option is the uh, charge function. Uh, I can charge, I can do a balance charge, or a, it's a cell bell on the iMars 3. I can put the battery into storage, or I can do a LiPo discharge. Most of the time, if you're plugging your battery into the charger, it's to charge. So the biggest thing here is the difference between a charge and a balance charge, or cell bell on the iMars 3. So... Charging the battery is going to charge the pack. That's pretty straightforward. A balance charge, though, is going to charge the pack and also make sure that each individual cell within the pack is in line with each other. Um, LiPo cells don't like to be drained past about 3 volts per cell. And the speed control in your car, your plane, or whatever, that's going to have a cutoff to prevent that from happening. Your speed control, though, is only going to be looking at full pack voltages, not individual cells. In this two cell pack, I could have one cell at like 2.7 volts and another at 3.4 volts. And overall, it'll be over six volts, so the speed control will think it's over three volts per cell. Uh, to prevent this, most speed controls are gonna cut off a little bit higher than three volts per cell, and most chargers are gonna have a balance function. If your charger doesn't have a balance function, get rid of it. A normal charge is going to be quicker than a balanced charge, and realistically, you probably only need to balance every few cycles, but the more out of sync you let your cells get, the longer that balanced charge is going to take. I would recommend balancing every time. That's just the safe, safest option. LiPo discharge, it's useful for some diagnostic things, but most people are never going to need to use it. And LiPo storage is the other function that's worth men mentioning. 
Uh, lipo packs don't like to be stored fully charged or dead. At either of those, those points, they'll start to discharge on their own. And again, uh, we don't want these packs to ever get below around 3 volts per cell. If they're at storage voltage though, they can sit for extended periods of time. You saw that our example battery, um, or I told you that our example battery anyway, was at uh, 3.79 and 3.8 volts on its two cells. And that's within that storage voltage range. Um, this function isn't something you need to do every night. Uh, the idea here is to use it when you know you're not gonna use the packs for a while, like over winter or while you're gonna be away for some reason. I think a conservative rule of thumb here would be like a week or more. If for some reason your charger doesn't have a storage function, I would recommend picking up a more capable charger, but in the meantime, just be sure to cycle your packs more frequently. Another common function that isn't on the IMRs3 is something called LiPo Fast Charge. If your charger has this option, please ignore it. It's super sketchy and it really shouldn't even exist. So now that we've walked through all the functions, I'm going to set the battery specific uh, fields and charge this pack. So start one more time. Let's me adjust the amperage. Uh, LiPo packs usually don't want to be charged faster than what's called a 1C rate, or one times the capacity of the pack in amps. Uh, this is a 5200 milliamp hour pack, or uh, 5.2 amps, milli being a thousandth. Uh, if you had a four point, or excuse me, if you had a 4600, you would charge at 4.6 amps, or a 3200 at 3.2 amps. So I can charge this at 5.2, in theory. This charger actually maxes out at 5 amps, so I'm going to take this to 5. At that 5.2 amps, this should take exactly an hour minus batter plus balance time. Um, so this will take just a hair over an hour. Um, uh, it's also worth noting that your uh, charge rate may be limited a little bit by the wattage of your charger. Um, this is a 100 watt charger, so on most packs that won't be relevant on the IMRs3, um, but on other packs it may. Uh, I'll be doing separate videos breaking down all the specs on a, on a given battery, uh, so if you want to know more about things like wattage or amperage or how that affects things, uh, be on the lookout for those. So next, my pack voltage. You can see that this goes up in increments of 3.7 volts per cell. That's a nominal, a nominal voltage of a LiPo cell. Um, or you can keep track of this little 1, 2, 3, S. That stands for cells in series. So my 2S pack is 2 cells in series. I press start one more time, and all my settings are kind of locked in. Uh, these are the same settings that you would use for uh, LiPo charge, LiPo balance charge, or LiPo storage. So I will plug my balance lead in, I already have plugged in, uh, into the proper 2S port on the balance board, and I will plug my battery XT60 side of the charge lead into the charger and the EC3 side into my battery. And now I press and hold start. It asks me to confirm that this is in fact a two cell pack, two cells in series. I press start again and we're charging. Uh, Pretty much all LiPo chargers will stop charging on their own, uh, but you don't want to leave them plugged in when they're done charging. Uh, when a battery is plugged into something, there's a little bit of a drain on it, and again, we don't want these to drain too far. Uh, so we want to unplug it from the charger when it's not in use, the same way we want to unplug it from a car, a boat, or an aircraft. If you're mindful of all of the things mentioned here, it's unlikely that you'll have issues with your batteries. With that said though, LiPo batteries can rarely be a serious fire hazard. You should ideally be charging in a designated area where a possible fire can't easily occur. Or if, if, it, does, if it does occur, I guess where it can't easily spread, more to the point. Uh, never let a battery charge unattended. The best thing you can do is pick up a fireproof bag or box to charge and store your lithium batteries in. Links to some of these options are in the description. So, I guess I'm going to sit here and wait for this battery to finish charging. Hopefully this video was helpful to you, and remember that we're here to answer any questions you may have. 
feel free to give us a call at any of our four locations or uh, shoot us an email at info at uh, Comment or message here or at any of our social media accounts. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us wherever you see this posted. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.